Hey everyone, welcome back to Walk and Study. Today we will be practicing for the listening section of the TOEFL and we will be focusing specifically on the lecture component of the listening section. While practicing for the listening section, we will be walking around Lowe's in Littleton, Colorado. Lowe's is a home improvement store that sells everything you need to work on your house. So first, I'll give a brief lecture, courtesy of Khan Academy, that is similar to the lectures you will hear on the TOEFL exam, and then we will ask seven questions about the information in the lecture. The answers to the questions are in the video description, but if you have any questions about the answers, ask them in the comments and we'll be happy to help. Okay, our lecture today will be about the Colombian Exchange, which was an important system of trade between the Americas, Europe, and Africa in the 15th and 16th centuries. So as you listen to the lecture, take a lot of notes and try to focus on the main ideas. The lecture will begin in three seconds. The Colombian Exchange, goods introduced by Europe, produced in the New World. As Europeans traversed the Atlantic, they brought with them plants, animals, and diseases that changed lives and landscapes on both sides of the ocean. These two-way exchanges between the Americas, Europe, and Africa are known collectively as the Columbian Exchange. Of all the commodities in the Atlantic world, sugar proved to be the most important. Indeed, in the colonial era, sugar carried the same economic importance as oil does today. European rivals raced to create sugar plantations in the Americas and fought wars for control of production. Although refined sugar was available in the Old World, Europe's harsher climate made sugarcane difficult to grow. Columbus brought sugar to Hispaniola in 1493, and the new crop thrived. Over the next century of colonization, Caribbean islands and most other tropical areas became centers of sugar production, which in turn fueled the demand to enslave Africans for labor. Now let's talk about goods from the New World that were introduced to the Old World. Though of secondary importance to sugar, tobacco also had great value for Europeans as a cash crop, a crop cultivated for sale instead of personal consumption. Native Americans had been growing tobacco for medicinal and ritual purposes for centuries before European contact, believing tobacco could improve concentration and enhance wisdom. To some, its use meant achieving an entranced, altered, or divine state. Tobacco was unknown in Europe before 1492, and it carried a negative stigma at first. The early Spanish explorers considered native people's use of tobacco to be proof of their savagery. However, European colonists then took up the habit of smoking, and they brought it across the Atlantic. Europeans ascribed medicinal properties to tobacco, claiming that it could cure headaches and skin irritations. Even so, Europeans did not import tobacco in great quantities until the 1590s. At that time, it became the first truly global commodity. English, French, Dutch, Spanish, and Portuguese colonists all grew it for the world market. Native peoples also introduced Europeans to chocolate made from cacao seeds and used by the Aztec in Mesoamerica as currency. Mesoamerican Indians consumed unsweetened chocolate and a drink with chili peppers, vanilla, and a spice called achiote. This chocolate drink, called chocolatl, was part of ritual ceremonies like marriage. Chocolate contains theobromine, a stimulant which may be why native people believed it brought them closer to the sacred world. Now let's talk about things from the Old World that were introduced to the New World. The crossing of the Atlantic by plants like cacao and tobacco illustrates the way in which the discovery of the New World changed the habits and behaviors of Europeans. 
Europeans changed the New World in turn, not least by bringing Old World animals to the Americas. On his second voyage, Christopher Columbus brought pigs, cows, chickens, and horses to the islands of the Caribbean. Many Native Americans used horses to transform their hunting and gathering into a highly mobile practice. Travelers between the Americas, Africa, and Europe also included microbes, silent, invisible life forms that have profoundly devastating consequences. Native peoples had no immunity to Old World diseases to which they had never been exposed. European explorers unwittingly brought with them chickenpox, measles, mumps, and smallpox, decimating some populations and wholly destroying others. One disease did travel the other direction. Syphilis, a lethal sexually transmitted disease, came with travelers from the New World to Europe for the first time. The Columbian Exchange embodies both the positive and negative environmental and health results of contact, as well as the cultural shifts produced by such contact. Okay, that's the end of the lecture, and now we'll move on to the first question. Question 1. The Columbian Exchange can be best described as A. A set of two-way exchanges between the Americas, Europe, and Africa that transferred people, animals, culture, technology, goods, and diseases. B. A system for bringing coffee to the Dutch colonies in Asia. C. A system of military administration in Colombia and Brazil. D mutually beneficial trade between the Queen of England and the Aztec Empire. Now let's look at question two. The most important agricultural good traded as part of the Columbian Exchange was A. Coffee B. Tobacco C. Sugar or D. Silver Okay, now let's look at question three. Prior to European colonization, Native Americans used tobacco, A, as a spice in their food, B, to protect themselves in battle, C, for medicinal and ritual purposes, D, to confuse their enemies. All right, now let's look at question four. The main point of the lecture is A, discussing every commodity traded between Europe, Africa, and the Americas. B, to give a brief overview of the Columbian Exchange. C, to discuss the administrative details of the Columbian Exchange. D, explaining how European diseases introduced by the Columbian Exchange decimated native populations. Okay, now let's look at question five. While Europeans introduced many new animals to the Americas, the reintroduction of the horse allowed Native Americans to A, build large productive farms, B, transform their hunting and gathering into a highly mobile practice, C, launch successful invasions into Europe, D, avoid all contact with Europeans. All right, now let's look at question six. What can be inferred from the lecture on the Columbian Exchange? A, Native Americans received nothing of value from European colonizers. B, Native Americans and European colonizers had universally positive and mutually beneficial interactions. C, the Columbian Exchange was a complex trade network that had both positive and negative effects on all parties involved. D. The Columbian Exchange was a complex trade network that introduced little of value to either Europe or the Americas. Now we'll look at question seven. Question seven is about the following passage. Listen closely as I reread the passage. 
The crossing of the Atlantic by plants like cacao and tobacco illustrates the ways in which the discovery of the New World changed the habits and behaviors of Europeans. Europeans changed the New World in turn, not least by bringing Old World animals to the Americas. On his second voyage, Christopher Columbus brought pigs, cows, chickens, and horses to the islands of the Caribbean. Many Native Americans used horses to transform their hunting and gathering into a highly mobile practice. This passage is intended to a illustrate the negative impacts that Europeans had on Native Americans, b describe the kinds of commodities Europeans introduced to Native Americans, c describe the kinds of commodities Native Americans introduced to Europeans, d illustrate the value of global trade networks. All right, don't forget that the answers to the questions are in the video description. Again, if you have any questions about any of the answers, please feel free to ask them in the comments. As always, I hope this lesson was helpful to you all. Subscribe below, give us a like if you found this video useful, and let us know in the comment section what else you'd like to learn about or see in our next walk and study lesson. Thanks everyone, take care.